Oi, oi, all right, all right. How's it going? I'm Grant. You're you. This is the Doodle Review. And it's Halloween. Happy Halloween. I thought I'd do something a bit different just to mark the uh, the old Hallow's Eve and just uh, give you a little run through of some of my favorite Halloween tracks. This is going to be completely off the cuff. Most of my videos are written out because I enjoy writing. But um, yeah, I just thought I would uh, give you some some thoughts on some favorite Halloween tracks. Um, I This was all driven by the fact that I came across a playlist recently that I'd put together well, about 10 years ago, um, about 10 years ago, I started a new job. And I think because a few people had gotten wind that I was like into music and they were planning a Halloween party for the staff, they basically asked me to DJ. And I've never DJed before, but I was like, yeah, okay, I'm up for it. I'm like, I'm such a tart and such a narcissist. I was like, oh my God, yeah, if I can, you know, all of these new people at this new job, I can really impress with my wild and eclectic taste in music and um, I'll make it a really good mix. So I actually remember downloading like Tractor or whatever it is and trying to um, learn how to mix. I created the playlist first. I actually, I remember not doing too bad on the mix. Anyway, the, the, the party never actually, the party happened, but they... Um, they backpedaled on offering it to me. I think they saw how seriously I was taking it. And then they were like, okay, yeah, we kind, of, we kind of just want someone to play like, you know, Rock Lobster and then just play Drake or whatever. So let's go through it. These are like 10, 10 tracks um, from, from this playlist. I'm just going to give you some thoughts off the top of the dome. So the first we're going to start off with is Human Fly by The Cramps. The Cramps are obviously like probably the ultimate Halloween band. They're up there as one of the ultimate Halloween bands. You could pick any number of tracks from them and it would be great. Um, Teenage Werewolf is, a, is another great one. So many songs of songs the Lord taught, taught us. But Human Fly, I think, is just, it's got that groove. So good. Um, the buzz, 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 the hook is great. It's quirky. It's weird. The quintessential track, probably the track that I heard that actually first got me into the cramps i think the cramps are a band as well that you're if you don't know them you go and listen to them and then you're like oh i kind of do know this song or this song or this song um but yeah when i actually like jumped in it was off the back of hearing human fly killer track you've got to have it on your halloween playlist uh next up burn the witch queens of the stone age uh, y'all know that i'm a big fan of uh, the queens i remember back when i would troll the message boards that someone that the, the message boards back then like 2006 7 era was basically just full of people that hated or didn't hate but like you know were butt hurt about um the band kind of moving away from the songs for the deaf sound getting rid of nick oliveri all of that stuff it was all very fresh back then um you know now it, it, the band have been in this formation longer than they were without anyway but someone made the comment i think when era vulgaris came out that like God, I'm just so sick to death of this band just making like Halloween mood music. And um, I thought that was a really funny description because I don't disagree. I actually happen to like it. But yeah, Halloween mood music, certainly from Lullabies through to Era Vulgaris, you know, definitely. Um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of that. But you've got Lanigan on vocals. You've also got Billy Gibbons of ZZ Top. Um, and if you watch the making of the solo, his solo goes off into this weird like... Uh, it's because he creates a harmonic with his beard just like just dragging off of the string while he played it up next just like i had to include queens i also had to include some motor motorhead now i chose overkill i can't remember why i chose overkill because there's obviously i don't know one another one that immediately springs to mind is killed by death um which you could argue might have a bit more of a, a halloween vibe you could also say um Orgasmatron, not because it's Orgasmatron, but doesn't that have like a kind of weird um, vocal manipulation? Anyway, you got to have some Motorhead if you were doing a Halloween playlist, not because they're a particularly Halloween band, but because any playlist where you're going slightly into rock, you got to fucking pay tribute, man. Pay tribute to one of the best that ever did it. Overkill, legendary. Uh, I love the track i love that the track itself is overkill with like two or three fake out endings and then just 
fucking killer man so good that whole album the overkill album is oh, it's just like an incredible rock and roll album you can't knock it damage case is obviously great you've got um overkill i'll be your sister um pay the price i mean it's just it's just amazing it's one of my favorite all-time records love it and then this is very much you can tell the time that i was putting this together the next track that i put on there was fangs by frank carter and the rattlesnakes and uh yeah i mean the halloween connection is clear fangs great uh, it's also a pretty great riff to be fair you know i think um especially this album from the rattlesnakes is definitely my favorite you know it was really a good move for frank carter i think to after a couple of maybe misfires with um, trying to do something outside of gallows to kind of i guess take it back to the right kind of tone and aesthetic of gallows but also give it a bit of a commercial leaning i think that rattlesnakes album that first one is a lot of fun they they kind of took it into a very much more commercial um commercial zone after that but yeah this this album's great that song is cool that riff down did it down did it down did it down down did it cool I saw them at the Joiners in Southampton right when this project was announced. I think right when it was just an EP. It was a lot of fun. It was a great show. Next up, a bit of a one-hit wonder. Actually, not a one-hit wonder, but they're a band I haven't spent a huge amount of time with. Or or have I? No, they did that album a couple of um, months ago. A couple of months ago. A couple of years ago with the... I did a drawing of it, the, but the hand hold like this demon hand holding a chalice and it's kind of a cool, weird garage rock psych kind of record. Okay. Yeah. I take it back. Datsuns. Am I talking about the Datsun? Am I? <sighs> Nothing like fun on Halloween, eh? Just l- listening to a guy chat in the living room about songs that you can't hear because of copyright reasons. Happy Halloween. Yeah, they made a record called Eye to Eye in 2021. It's actually pretty good, if I remember rightly. It's kind of like T-Rexy, but kind of weird. Anyway, you've uh, you've got a Halloween playlist, so it makes sense that you're going to play Motherfucker from Hell. I mean, this is a like kind of corny track, but like a motherfucker from hell. It's just good laugh isn't it bit of a laugh bit of a laugh the next out the next track i had on here was know your enemy and i feel like this was for no other reason than to kind of just get out of where i was in this playlist i can't remember why it's got not really any halloween aspect to it has it it's a great track that first rage album is killer is there another what rage track would be better for halloween I think they would probably say like late stage capitalism is just its own its own form of terror and therefore any of their songs would be appropriate. Wouldn't they wouldn't I wouldn't disagree with that. Is there a better track for Halloween? Like something that's got a bit of a No, they didn't really fuck about with like being coy, did they? It was like boom. So anyway, know your enemy is on here for for some reason. The weakest part of this track is to me is the did do did do did 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 do did do. It's iconic, but I'm just like I never have enjoyed the Tom Morello bells and whistles form of guitar. It's gimmicky, but what this band did as a group is like way over and above what that is. And I'm not knocking Morello as a guitar player. I just don't like the weird like like look at me i'm making scratchy dj scratch noises Uh, but someone had to do it right track is rock is dead by marilyn manson we'll have to do a a video on he's got a new album coming out isn't he and i feel like i'm gonna need to reckon with uh do how do i feel given that he's a scumbag did we kind of realize that he was a scumbag before i kind of always like to give into the fantasy that he genuinely was a, an artist provoking people with shock rock um, tactics to inspire questioning of, you know, right wing Christian ideology in America rather than actually being who he portrayed. But it turns out in the last 10 years, maybe he was 
the scumbag that you know i don't know he's i think he's been acquitted of most stuff but then isn't anyone like isn't sa in general when it gets brought to trial like it's one of the hardest crimes to prove like it has most people walk away from it so i feel like what does that mean it doesn't mean that if someone's acquitted that you just have to assume they're innocent i suppose that is like what what the court system is predicated on you know presu innocent and presu presumed innocent until proven guilty um yeah i don't know it's probably going to cut this bit out uh, so yeah i think another time we need to talk about marilyn manson and how um how we feel about him but i can't deny rock is dead is a fucking huge tune and i will always it will always hold a special place for me because it's the last track it's the uh, it's included in the matrix soundtrack isn't it i'm pretty sure it's like the end credits after they do the wake up bit um it's the rock is dead and like that song and that film i watched hundreds of times back to back to back to back to back to back, to back. so it's got that association i think it's just a killer jam it's kind of like kiss um really simple riff and i love all of the synth aspects to it and uh yeah you know let's just pretend like the last few years haven't happened with regards to this artist and just enjoy it for what it is for a moment in this particular context and then we can have a bigger conversation about whether um yeah whether whether we should uh, just not talk about this artist anymore moving on rock with the devil go uh, rock with the devil ride with the devil race with the devil i'm trying to look at the playlist from over the other side of the room it's quite hard and now the sun's in my eyes uh, race with the devil killer riff um what more can you say i don't actually know a lot about girl school other than their kind of like um crossover with motorhead back in the day and there's the um tracks that lemmy features on i don't know i, I never always like enjoyed it that much more f because just lemmy was clearly just like you know really trying it on with the members of the band so i just felt like the project was more of a um excuse for him to get close to uh the women in that in that band and you know fair play to him he was doing his his thing and uh by all accounts a very respectful man but yeah he definitely liked to uh get <laughs> get in there with the ladies and i felt like this was is you know it's almost like watching a friend chat someone up at a bar or like you know when they're when they're when they're really trying it on and you're like oh god i don't know if i can watch this that was the vibe that i would get from some of the lemmy collaborations but you can't deny race with the devil is banger and it's got devil in the title so therefore it fits this halloween halloween theme and uh the next track on this playlist has just prompted me to realize one clear um a mission from this place which i did have on here but i for some reason it's been deleted i think there was actually another like 10 tracks here but thank god for you all that it's not here because i can feel my boring myself with this playlist uh with this video um london dungeon by misfits again look much like the cramps misfits you could choose any you could choose so many misfit songs the whole the whole albums you know they're they're horrorcore aren't they aren't they i guess they kind of gave birth to that whole thing it's their thing and you could choose so many of them i would probably say london dungeon i really like that riff uh wow boom 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 and funny story i didn't know i didn't know that that riff was actually a song for ages because it's included on the walk among us album um because the track nike go go is a live track and then right at the end as they cut off that track you would just hear them going into london dungeon and for so long um walk among us was the only misfits album that i knew 
and I just figured that that was maybe either the outro of that song or it was just them jamming live. And then it wasn't until I eventually heard the yellow one. Is it Collection 2 or just Misfits? Whatever it is, that compilation where London Dungeon's on it. And I was like, oh, it is actually a tune. And it's a great tune as well. The riff is, is killer. I really like the sound of the recording, which isn't something you would typically say about most of that old Misfit stuff. But I, that particular track sounds great. I love, and I love it when songs do this. It has a bit where the drum accents the second beat of the bar on a, I don't know if this, I'm, sometimes when I talk about drum stuff, I, I have to remind people, and it will be obvious for people that play drums. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm just kind of guessing. Um, but they basically do this thing where it's, um, which it feels like it's like the accenting the offbeat part of the track. And I love it when tracks do that. It's so good. So yeah, London Dungeon. And then the reason I was prompted to remember Misfits is because the next track is Halloween. But I will die on this hill. I prefer the AFI version of Halloween over Misfits version. I know it's a Misfits track, um, but it is just a great version. The AFI's version is better. You know, it's better, better recorded, better quality. You can crank it, it's super loud. And um, my guy from AFI that I'm completely spacing his fucking name now, the singer, just when he he goes off, I remember Halloween. So good, so good. That is like probably the ultimate Halloween track. And then I ended the um, ended the playlist here with Highway to Hell, which you know, ACDC. Far from my favorite ACDC track. And I wonder if you could use another ACDC song for a Halloween thing. Highway to Hell is like, you could do Hell's Bells and maybe Hell's Bells would be the one that I would end it on. Yeah, I'm going to scrap that. Let's say Hell's Bells. Highway to Hell is overdone. It's a bit predictable. Hell's Bells, banger. Anyway, um, if you made it this far, fair play. I, um, I yeah. I, I would struggle. I don't know if this is putting anyone in the Halloween spirit. But um, I thought I'd do it. Why not? You know, a bit of fun. I'm going to put this playlist down below. It's not really mixed. Maybe I'll try and mix mix it, get like a better track order. It'll be linked below. So if you need something to listen to for Halloween, give it a, give it a fucking go. Uh, other than that, take care, mate. Mind how you go. Cheers then. Bye.